page in Internet Explorer looks different than we do it in Google Chrome. All right. So this is how it looks in Google Chrome. And that's how we want it to look, at least so far. There's still some changes we need to make, but, but that's the header looks the way that we want it to. We open this up in Internet Explorer. It looks like that. Okay. And the question was, you know, first of all, we should ask ourselves, did we do everything right? Because if we didn't do everything right, then that's the first step for us to do is to correct the mistakes we make. Well, how do we know if we made any mistakes as far as the rules of HTML and CSS go? Well, we can look at the code and we can stare at it and, and that sometimes points out problems. But there's also a tool called the validator. All right. The organization that created these web standards, w3c.org, this is different than W3 schools, all right? This is, this, is, this is actually the standards organization. These are the folks that define what HTML is and, and so on. But they have some validators over here on the side of the page. You can see validators for HTML and CSS. So let's make sure our HTML and CSS are valid, first of all. All right, that's like always a starting point. Don't blame someone else until you've checked out and make sure it isn't your mistake. So we'll go in here. And for each of these validators, we can either put in the address of it or upload the file. But what I usually do is validate by direct input, which will give me a big text area. I can then open up my HTML document. and copy and paste it and validate it. So I click the check and you can think of this as being like spell check or grammar check in Word, right? Spell check and grammar check don't show you if you've written a good term paper, right? Um, you could write nonsense and it could pass grammar check and spell check. Well, same thing here. This isn't telling you that your page is well designed. This is telling you that you follow the rules of the language, just like spell check and grammar check in Word tells you. So I click check and it tells me actually just gives me a warning. All right. It's telling me that they, I have sections that don't have headings in them. So here's my section and I don't have a heading. So that's just a warning. That, that's not wrong per se, but it's telling me maybe it's wrong. So, well, yeah, that's a good point. We probably could use a heading in here. And so I'm going to put an H1 in here and I'm going to say Actually, I've, I'm going to put an H2 in here because I have an H1 up there. I've read different things. Some places say use the H1 here, you know, because that's the top level heading in that section. Other places say for the whole page. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do an H2 today. Um, and I'll just put the word section title in here. And for each page, I'll go and I'll change that. So let me try to validate this now. So I'll repaste it in there and check. And if I look, I just have a couple of information messages. I don't have any errors or even warnings. 
So my HTML is, is good. Let's do the same thing with my CSS and validate that. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to validate my CSS. I'm going to copy, do the same thing, validate it by direct input. Oh, well, I have a typo. Sort of. Margin AU is not an option. Oh, I didn't paste the whole thing in there. I cut it off there. There we go. Congratulations, no error found. Okay, so we've gotten ourselves off the hook. All right. That's the good news, and that's also the bad news. The good news is that, yeah, we know our web programming. All right, we, we know our HTML and CSS. The bad news is it's still our problem. We can't go to our boss and say, hey, um, there's a problem with Internet Explorer. I wrote my code right, but it doesn't display the way that we want the site to be. But since my code validated, that's Internet Explorer's fault, so I'm not going to fix it. Doesn't work that way. It's your problem. It's your web page. You've got to make it work in the environment that it is. And part of the environment is that different browsers behave differently. Now, in this case, I think we touched on this, is that we have a very old version of Internet Explorer here. All right? And it, we have a version of Internet Explorer that's so old that it doesn't recognize some of the HTML5 elements. All right. So what do we do? Do we not use the HTML5 elements? Well, that doesn't seem like a good idea to just because a small percentage of people use this old version of Internet Explorer um, to, uh, to not use and not take advantage of the HTML5 elements. So, yeah, that's not the approach we're going to take. One approach to take would be to say, you know what? This page doesn't look identical in both page in both browsers, but at least it's workable. I mean, you could use this page and it's plain and it's not as good, but if they're using an old browser, well, that's kind of what they get. All right? And that's a valid position as well sometimes. However, the optimal is, is if you can find a quick way to fix it so that it works across all browsers, then do it. Now, fortunately for us, there's some real clever people in the world that solve this problem for us. And this is talked about in the textbook. I'm not sure where. But there is something called the HTML5 shiv. I'm not much of a handyman, but what I, what I gather, uh, a shiv is like something that you like throw in to sort of just a quick fix to something like a project. Like you know, if your air condition rattle, if your air conditioner rattles in the window, you might put like a little wedge of wood underneath it to just kind of hold it. It's not like a real good solution, but hey, it gets the job done and it doesn't keep you up at night. All right. The HTML shiv is kind of like that. What we can do is There's more information than you want to know. Um, I just want to find an example of using it. The HTML shiv is a little snippet of code that you can put in to your web page that sort of fixes 
Internet Explorer and sort of teaches Internet Explorer how to handle HTML5 code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these lines of code in here. And I'll post this example. I'm going to post it and I'm going to copy it in the head section of my code. In a nutshell, this is a combination of some JavaScript and some things specific to Internet Explorer, but if they're using an, a version of Internet Explorer less than 9, it's going to run out and execute this little snippet of code, which essentially is a little band-aid that makes your HTML work in Internet Explorer. So I save that. I go back here. Oops. And hit refresh. And all of a sudden it more or less knows HTML5. All right. So this looks doesn't look identical yet. And it probably will never look identical. <laughs> All right, but at least it's closer to the design that we want. The one thing that you'll notice, for example, is it doesn't have the rounded edges. It has the square edges. But you know what? I can live with that if I'm developing that. You know, I mean, my idea is to have my page look perfect and look identical across all platforms. That's not realistic. You're not going to have a case of that. <clears throat> so what you do is you, what you shoot for is that at least it looks good and is workable across platforms. So, from every assignment from now on, you should step, uh, insert this little snippet of code. All right. There's also a similar thing for Firefox, for older versions of Firefox. All right. Um, that I might as well do as well. Now we don't have an old version of Firefox here. I don't think. Let me try opening the page in Firefox. No, we have a newer version of it. But we'd have a similar problem in older versions of Firefox. And the way that you fix that is you can create a similar thing that simply says header, footer, article, section, nav, aside, and all the rest of them. I think that's all of them. Display block. So this, this essentially teaches Firefox how to handle HTML5 elements. So I'm going to go and save this as. And it's not going to affect anything. But if we happen to have an old version of Firefox, it would apply that style to it as well. So from here on in, every one of your pages should have this in it. And you can copy my version of Firefox.css and you can use this verbatim. All right. And that will sort of, as a band-aid, to sort of fix some problems with earlier browsers. Will that fix them completely? No. There's nothing we can do to make older browsers completely HTML5 compatible. But this at least helps out in that regard. All right. Let's continue on. Uh, Go ahead. I have a question. Mm -hmm. the, the condition where you place the HTML5 mm -hmm. obviously you're linking, to, linking directly to that code. 
Right. But within that condition, is there any type yourself as a plan B or a if I could use tags or options myself? Yeah, you could put another style sheet in there if you had a, if you had style sheet code specific to HTML to, to earlier versions of Internet Explorer, you could put that in there. Are there any direct ways to influence the HTML directly? Altering, for example, uh, the main tag. Is there a way? I mean, that's a very open-ended question. There's almost always a way. Um, you'd have to look at the specific problem to see what it is that you wanted to do. And when you say the main isn't working, uh, the HTML5 shift may even handle the main. I don't remember uh, if it does or not. But yeah, you, you'd, have to, you'd have to look at the specific problem for that. But yeah, you could you could put your own style sheet or even JavaScript code in there if you wanted. Alrighty. So let's continue on here and let's finish up. I, I want to do two things today. I want to, and we'll see how far we get. I doubt if we'll be able to get through all this completely. The next several classes, the focus is really gonna heavily gonna be on CSS, because we're talking about the surface layer, in other words, making the page look good. All right, so the first thing I want to do today, after we've talked about the browser compatibility issue, is to get and achieve the wireframe look that we wanted. If you remember, we want to look like this. What we have are now our content area. All right, so first pass, we want to do that, all right, which we should be able to get to today. Second thing we want to do is we want to actually make it look good. We want to make it look like a completed page. That's a nice color green, at least I think so, but I don't think it's a good color for a pizza place. And there's some things that we could do to make it look nicer. So first thing we're going to do is try to get it into this wireframe format. And then the second thing that we're going to do is make it look nice. Going forward in the next week, we're going to look at all the different ways that you can control the layout of the page. So that we chose one particular wireframe here and a particular layout, but there's a lot of other options that we could have done instead. We could have the navigation running vertically along the left side of the page, for example, is another common one. We'll look at ways to accomplish that um, next week. All right. So onward and upward. The next thing I want to look at is the navigation. Now navigation, we want a couple things. We want the navigation to sort of be the same as this. All right. And we want these links to be oriented horizontally instead of vertically. All right. And we probably don't want the bullet point. Now, if your initial answer is, well, then take them out of the unordered list, that's not correct. Uh, a navigation section is a list of elements, so it belongs in a list. All right? If we don't want to see the bullet points, that's fine. All right? We can get rid of the bullet points, because remember, anything about the way that it looks is controllable via CSS. So let's go into our CSS. Just about everything we do in this example, for the rest of today anyhow, is going to be done in CSS. And I'm going to do the nav section. And I'm going to say background white with 600 pixels, padding, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to keep the same style rule for that. I can actually, a shorthand for doing that is this. Let me do that for my four main sections. I should be able to take care of them all at once.
Not bad, huh? Starting to look like a actual website instead of just, you know, a collection of pages. Or, or rather than just a, a, a page that's thrown together. All right. Again, if you put separate by commas, you can apply this style rule to all of the elements. Or I could have copied and pasted it. I guess it depends on, on what I want to do going forward. Still, we're stuck with this navigation that does not look good. All right? We, wanna, we sort of want to make it look like buttons, in, in effect. Uh, at the very least, we want to make it horizontal and do that. So how can we do that? Well, we can do a selector and say nav UL. And first of all, we can say list style type none. What do you suppose that's going to do? Okay, get rid of the bullet points. All right. What's this going to do? This is what's going to make them line up side by side. This is sort of a mix between inline and block. So we'll still be able to kind of treat it like a block tag, but it will line up side by side. All right. So let's see what this does for us. Right. Not bad. How can we spread these out a little bit? Okay, we could use a margin right on these. Remember, a margin is the space between blocks. Um, so what I can do is I could put in here on the LI, I can say margin right, and I could put a certain number of pixels, 10 pixels, let's say. That spaces them out a little bit. So you could go and figure out how you wanted it spaced out. What if we want to change the color of these links? Well, I guess that depends on whether we want to change the color of every link or just the links in the navigation section. If we want to just change, and I'm going to assume we just want to change the links in the navigation section, then our selector is nav A. Remember, when you have separated by commas, that means this gets the rule, and this gets the rule, and this gets the rule. When they're not separated by commas, what that's saying is UL tags that are part of the navigation, LI tags that are part of the navigation. Not all LIs, but LIs that are in the navigation. So here I'm saying links within the navigation. I'm going to make a background color. of make the background color the same as the page. Actually, I'm going to yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this. Background that and color white. I hope that's going to come out right. And I'm going to actually change and put these here as well. All right, so now we have looking like that. Do we like those? No, we can't barely read them. So let's make the color black. And let's get rid of the underline. Text decoration, none. Now, again, how do I know these things? Am I just making them up? No, these have been defined. We have to get the precise syntax of it for it to work. Why do I know these things? Because I've done these particular attributes a lot. 
Um, until you get to that point where you've done things over and over again and you recognize them, then use a resource. Um, that's, that's why the first assignment in this class was to find resources about HTML and CSS. The idea was, hey, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can look up and, and figure out how to do things. All right, that looks better. What could we do to make them look more like buttons? Okay, you're right, but as they say, the devil's in the details, right? Here's what we have right now. Let's say I want to make it look like a button. Right now, my A block looks like this. Something like that, and it's a different color shaded in. We might recommend... A and actually have a border going around it in a different color. So let's think of the things that we might, might want to change about this. We might, might, might want to change the border to give it a border, to make it look more like a button. We might change the padding to put some space between the and the text. And then, well, that's probably all right, so let's go and do that. So I'm going to say padding 10px. What does padding 10px do? That puts the top, right, bottom, left. I give one value for the padding, it'll be used in all four directions. And then finally, I'm going to say border solid 1px black let's see what that gives us All right now those look like buttons all right what if we wanted to make it so if you put your mouse over the button something happened. In other words, to show that those are in fact buttons. It ought to be obvious that those are buttons, by the way. All right, because just the way that looks, that's pretty standard for a navigation. But we could give an additional visual cue by doing something when the mouse goes over that. Well, what we can do is we can put in a section that says nav a colon hover. The colon hover is what's called a pseudo class. What that is is it sort of acts like a class. In other words, when this is going on, use this style. And in this case, what I mean by when this is going on, I mean that when the mouse is hovered over the link. So I could do something like, maybe make the background white. There we go. We put our mouse on it. And there we go. Questions over any of this? Let's, let's go back and let's get rid of all the CSS out of this file. I want to sort of demonstrate something with this.
So I'm going to get rid of all the CSS for it. Here's the HTML. What does that look like? That looks like your week one assignment, your week two assignment, and so on. Not really doing anything tricky with the HTML here. HTML is very ba basic, very bare bones. When we go and add just a bit of CSS, all right, these two things, again, you don't even have to think about. You just put them in. The only thing we really did is added this CSS, which is that much? Not really that much, right? But when we add that in there, notice how the page looks way better and looks more like a completed page. And then, of course, we could do more things to make it look better still. And that's what I aim to do for at least the rest of today. All right? Okay, so let's go in and let's, let's add some things to it. First thing I don't like is I don't like the colors. All right? What colors should I have for a pizza place? Red, green, and white. All right. So we could go to the color scheme generator. Let's try that. And let's see if we can generate a nice red, green. I always forget the one that I want to use, what it's called. Not monochromatic, but triads. There we go. We could go and we could play around with the shading a little bit to get the kind that we want. So we could make it like that. We could shift things around. We can make it more bright. We can make it more pale. I kind of like this there in the center. Now notice that we have, oh, forget about it. I don't think that fits in the scheme. But notice we have a lot. We have five reds and five greens. That's 10 colors. That is plenty. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do more than that anyhow, probably. Remember, you use, you're using colors to emphasize things. And therefore, if um, you try to emphasize everything, then it's going to be confusing and nothing is going to get emphasized. So let's go and let's make the background of the page this. So I'm going to make the background of the page this color. I'm going to make each section make each section this color. Let's see what that gives us. Don't really like it. Kind of do. The green's okay. Red needs to be brighter. Okay. So let's
I like that. Now, again, your mileage may vary. You may not like that, but hey, it's not bad. Um, the navigation buttons now kind of look ugly against that green. Let's make them a light shade of red. It could work. We could play around with that. I'm not sure I'm sold on that. Could we make them look like pepperonis? Interesting question. All right. Let's try that. You know, let's try to make them look like pepperonis. All right. So how are we going to do that? Well, we need a picture of a pep piece of pepperoni. So let's look at a slice of pepperoni. Yeah. Let's take this. It has a watermark on it. Let's see if we can find one without a watermark. Oh, that looks good. New image. So I saved it in my folder, and I called it pepperoni. All right. How do we make our stock go and do that? Well, could do that a couple different ways. All right. That should be my theme song. Well, you could do it a couple different ways. Background, instead of specifying a color, I can specify an image. So I could say URL. PNG. Then notice how my image is as the background. Now, if I want to see more of the image, I can make those links bigger. So I could give the link a height. Let's see how big the image is. Let's make it match up the size of the image exactly. Let's open this up in something. Good old paint. It is 
127 by 109. Someone remember that. All right. 109 pixels with 127 pixels. There we go. Except it's a little bit too big. So let's, let's edit that image and make it smaller. If you're going to be a web developer, you should know basics of editing images and things like that. You don't have to be an expert, but it does help if you can at least do the very basic thing. So let's make this a 60 by 51. Actually, I kind of like if, if when we hovered it, it would show the pepperoni. That makes more sense to me. So we'll just switch this, and we'll put this here. Not bad. We could do it. We could make that text bold if we wanted it to make it stand out more. And that is the font weight property. So I could say when the mouse for it, font weight bold. Oh, you know what? I made, I had two copies of that open. not bad. We can make the background of the whole page a giant pizza if we wanted to. Let me put my credit I'm going to put my credit somewhere in the footer. Let's go in Google search, image search, I mean, and let's look for a pizza image. And let's look for a big pizza image. So let's go into advanced search. 
And let's look for things that are licensed under Creative, Commerce, uh, Creative uh, Commons. Save it. I'm going to edit it a little bit. First of all, I'm going to crop it because I, I only want the good part of it. Whoops. I only want the good part of the pizza to show. All right, I did that a very roundabout way, but I got to where I wanted to be. I'm going to go and save this. Then I'm going to say, I'm going to make my header. Have a background. All right, not bad. <laughs> Might want to change that to a different color text. Let's go in and make the color of the text white. That probably will stand out better. There we go. We could pick the right color to do that. Now, here's the thing. That made it look right? But that information to the user, all right? Now, to be sure, Pizza House should give you a pretty good idea of the kind of food we sell, all right? But if it was, say, let's just say, Zeller's food or something like that, the picture of the pizza would be a pizza place, all right? Or Zeller, you know, boom, that's a pizza place. So the design isn't just you don't have information. The color gives you the sense that this is probably an Italian restaurant. All right, it's a visual cue. So these things are designed to make it look, be sure, but to convey subtly a little bit of information. All right, what we're doing, if we have more time, uh, will be to make this in a slightly different color, just to make it stand out a little bit more. All right. So that would be one thing I would consider doing. All right. We covered a lot. I don't expect you to memorize all things, but it is good if you uh, expand your repertoire and start including different CSS things. And there's a lot of great resources where you can look them up, the book, online, my examples. All right. We'll see.